going to go to uh, Dr. Michio Kaku, talk about a guy who's enthusiastic about this, uh, all over the possibilities of this long before most. Uh, doctor, so good to have you. You know what is amazing, if you think about it, is, is eventually the goal is to get these sample specimens, you know, sediment and all that, back to Earth so to be studied. Now, it won't be done with this mission, but follow-up missions that are already being choreographed to hook up if this thing, you know, blasts off the surface, transfers a lot of this stuff to these new rockets and back to Earth. That is unprecedented. What do you make of it? That's right. Think of rock retrieval as a dress rehearsal, a mini dress rehearsal for astronaut retrieval. The steps that we're going to use to bring back rocks, that is, uh, have a lander there, collect samples, have an orbiter, go back to the orbiter, back to the planet Earth. Those are the same steps necessary to put humans on Mars and bring them back alive. So I see this as a mini dress rehearsal for the ultimate exploration, human exploration of Mars. Remember that in 2024 or so, we're going to go back to the moon, perhaps build an orbiter around the moon from which to build a Mars rocket. Or if you're Elon Musk, why not do it in just one big jump? So when you see this Mars mission, realize that this is the beginning, not the end, the beginning of a new era of space exploration. In the first era, we beat the Russians. Okay, we did it. We beat the Russians. In the second era, we're going into outer space to stay in outer space, explore the universe. You know, John Kennedy once famously said, it is in man's blood to look to the stars, to conquer the stars. Uh, he could have just as easily talked about planets and satellites like the moon. But this is one leap in a direction and complicated it so much by these very precise features to get this going and down to this rover that will span the moon, the, the Martian surface, then this helicopter. Um, that will be, you know, not only taking a look at images, but giving us heretofore sites unseen. What are some of the things you're looking for, Professor, or looking forward to? Well, you know, rock retrieval is going to be a game changer because we know that the conditions of Mars, once upon a time, a few billion years ago, it had, it had seas, it had oceans, but did it have life? And this could actually answer that key question. Are we alone? That is, is life only on the planet Earth or is it in outer space? And just remember, this has other implications as well. The dinosaurs, the dinosaurs did not have a space program. And that's why they're not here today to talk about it. They didn't have a Mars program. They didn't explore other worlds and they paid the price. They're no longer here. We do have a Mars program. We do have a space program. And this shows the ingenuity of NASA engineers, shows the tremendous technological superiority that we have in this country. Professor, I'm so glad to have you today. Um, you, you just put the right enthusiastic punch to it. And it is a historic day. Thank you. We're waiting for that first image to come. Uh, from the spacecraft here. Uh, but I'm so reminded of my friend Gene Cernan, the last man to walk on the moon, who said, you know, Neil, we are born to explore. We are born to acknowledge the times we live in and that we can't do this or won't do this. This, this attaches to our better assets, our better possibilities, our better frame of mind. When you push your mind, when you reach for the stars, when you grasp an opportunity like this, when everyone says, this is impossible. Moments ago, we learned something. It is not. And moments ago, we also learned that though it is very, very cold in much of the Atlantic coast right now, we're in New York City, it's 28 degrees, could be a little worse. On Mars right now, it's 137 degrees below zero.